ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಅವರು ಬೈತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾಮಂತ್ರ ಗೀಜ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಶೇರ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಜನ್ಸಿ ನಾವು we are proceeding with the seventh session today called putting principle before penning om ajnana timirandasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshuh vanmelitam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri mate bhakti vedanta swami niti namine namaste saraswate deve gauravani pracharine ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶಧಾರಿಣೇ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಜೆರಿ ವಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಿ ದ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟೈಟಲ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ we began with this from me to we consciousness 
align with sacred lord not with one's crooked thoughts then we proceeded to ask for god's company or his pocket's penny mm -hmm. then the previous class we finished lord who never fails in his love for devotees apart from this four two more classes i devoted to giving an introduction uh, to bhagavad gita mm -hmm. so that took a couple of classes so six classes are over today is the seventh class putting principle before penny <clears throat> what is the meaning of this topic of principle before penny um, in this world for the sake of pleasure sometimes people are ready to you know forego the principles for the sake of the taste buds of the tongue uh, to eat uh, something delicious people are ready to kill um, animals innocent creatures like they also eat like animals also eat we also eat they sleep we sleep mm. they also reproduce we also reproduce mm. they also defend they want to save their lives they want to do self preservation mm. so maybe we also try to do then how are they different from us mm. they are also doing the same activities they are respectable uh, creatures they have a right to live also as much as we have a right to live so putting pleasure before principle means for the taste buds you know doing getting anything not caring for the other lives that's one meaning of pleasure before principle mm -hmm. similarly putting uh, pleasure before principle also means for the sake of one's own pleasure for going moral principles ethical principles because pleasure is everything for some people i just want to enjoy life that's all i will learn money by immoral means or i will if need be i can hurt and harm other god's creatures also for my pleasure so that is like uh, putting um, pleasure before principle here we are talking about mm, uh, the putting principle before penny this is arjuna so let us proceed further Hmm. these are some of the principles that arjuna considered you now when krishna uh, requested the i mean krishna took the chariot between the two armies hmm. and arjuna saw hmm. uh, he saw many uh, relatives like grandfather bhishma hmm, and bhishma's uh, contemporaries also hmm. actually bhishma's father is shantanu shantanu's uh, brother's son uh, and uh, bra shantanu's uh, elder brother's grandson uh, burishrava somadatta and such personalities were also there um, bhalika so such uh, three generations were there um, so when uh, he saw the uncles and cousins and other people in the battle krupaya uh, paraya avishto um, which means he became overpowered by compassion in his heart arjuna so at that time he considered um, five reasons why he didn't want to fight the battle i am just going to show you now here you see these are the five reasons i am going to elaborate also how can i kill my friends and family members that was his first question without them how can i enjoy even if i get unravel the kingdom how will i enjoy then sin will overcome us he thought mm, by killing these people and family tradition should be finished and is it should i fight this dharma yuddha or not so in this way arjuna is considering um, what is the pure principle on the other hand you can see duryodhana once i finish this pandava i can enjoy the uh, enjoy ruling over the world as an unrival king he doesn't care uh, any farthing about anything mm, he doesn't see what is dharma what is adharma because he goes by pleasure a penny a penny means a wealth mm. wealth or the land mm, or, uh, wealth means the like gold or diamond or silver or land or women for that uh, sake is, uh, some people in this world are ready to do anything they just don't care for the laws of god and they get uh, destroyed mm. like duryodhana is one such example the other hand arjuna being a devotee of the lord he is considering this uh, principle hmm. 
So let us see each of these uh, reasons one by one. Yeah. Here you can see, that I have given a quote here, below, blue color you can see. Uh, Ahimsan Sarva Bhutani is found in Chandogya Upanishad. Nahim Syat Sarva Bhutani is quoted by Sri Pad Ramanuja and Sri Swami. And Mahabharata also says, Nahim Syat Sarva Bhutani Maitrayana Gata Charit, which means don't harm other creatures, be friendly with other creatures. That's what the ideal gentleman should do. Hmm. So now, uh, here is the point. Yes, one should be non-violent. At the same time, violence also has its place. For example, a thief may take a knife and stab somebody. That is violence and that shouldn't be done. Hmm. Murderer. On the other hand, the same knife in the hands of a surgeon can uh, cut the belly of somebody and then save them from some cancer. Hmm? It can save them from uh, through a surgery. So that is a, a violence used for the right uh, purpose, isn't it? Hmm? Your son is observing that uh, doctor is taking a knife and cutting the body of his father. And he knows that it is for, for the welfare of his father is doing. Doctor is not an enemy. Hmm? He's doing for the benefit. So that is a violence used for the right purpose. Hmm? So uh, one time in uh, South India, um, there were, there were a couple of uh, thieves. They entered with a kerosene tin with a matchbox. And they entered into the bus. And they said that you all have to remove your wallets. And uh, we are going to uh, loot you now. And if anybody makes any sound or any noise, we will throw this kerosene and set the whole bus ablaze. Hmm? Like that they... Uh, threatened. So people got very frightened. Everybody was frozen. Mm -hmm. And the wallets were taken away. All the money from the people's pockets were taken away. Uh, and the police uh, captured these fellows. Mm -hmm. Now they were put behind the bars for many years of sentence. So some people uh, argued in the court that, you see, they didn't do anything. They just threatened. You know, they just brought a kerosene tin along with a matchbox. That's all they brought. But they didn't do anything. Why should they be put behind the bus for 10 years or 15 years? Mm -hmm. So the police uh, reasoned that they deserve to be punished like this because, you know, they came with the criminal intent. Mm -hmm. And uh, in case they lost control of themselves and they set the bus ablaze, there will be 60 people in the bus will be burned alive. Huh? That's a great uh, uh, deadly act it is. Huh? It would have been a great gruesome murder of so many people. Mm. So now it appears like violence to put them behind the bars for 10 years. Huh? But at the same time, uh, it's a duty of the king to punish the culprits by such punishments for the welfare of the society, protection of the people living in society, and for tying the hands and legs of criminals and not uh, let them the freedom to perpetrate any sinful act, uh, uh, harmful act on the other living beings. Just like, for example, if a tiger or a lion, you know, from the forest, uh, sometimes it happens that uh, a tiger or a lion has become old and they are not able to chase after the deer in the forest. So sometimes they come to the village hmm, to attack the human beings. They become a man-eater tiger. Hmm. Then uh, the police will shoot the tiger. Hmm. Somebody may say, why you are so cruel to the tiger? Hmm. But uh, the animals uh, in the forest are not supposed to cross their boundary and come into the uh, village or the city to attack the people. Hmm? Then it becomes a great threat. So Srila Prabhupada says that just as the animals are controlled by a weapon, uh, in the same manner, those who are uh, greatly uh, deadly for the society like terrorists uh, uh, or uh, those who, are, those who are, uh, have a tendency to injure the innocent uh, people, then they have to be controlled in the same manner as the animals have to be controlled. Huh? So, therefore, uh, one should know the right use of violence and one should not uh, whimsically use violence uh, imagining that I can take the control of everything in my hands. Huh? One cannot do that. It has to be properly uh, guided by the uh, authority, by the superior, 
So the kings had that right in the Vedic times. For example, somebody was given a hanging punishment. They had, for example, a murderer was hanged. Somebody may say that anyway, the murderer has already done his job now, that life cannot be brought back. Why do you take away one more life? Some people may argue like that. But actually, according to the uh, wisdom literatures, they say that if a murderer is given the death sentence, that means his punishment is over. He will not have to go to hell to suffer in uh, hell once again. Now itself is uh, term uh, punishment is over. And the king who administers that punishment, he also will go to heaven uh, because of giving this punishment. And the mass of people will learn a lesson that you should not murder other people. Otherwise, you will be hanged. Hmm? One should not do that. So, hmm, like I remember last year uh, in uh, South India, a place called Hyderabad, you know, one innocent girl was walking at 7 o'clock in the night on the road and three fellows captured her and put her in a car and took her to the uh, outskirts and then uh, gang raped her. And she died also. Then uh, the police captured these three people, took them to a neighborhood forest, pew, 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 shot them, all three of them. Hmm. So many people objected to this. They said, what is this? Just because they uh, raped, girl, raped a girl, gang raped a girl, you have to shoot them? You know, give them some punishment, two months, three months in the jail, and then release them, they were saying. Hmm. But then the, the top authorities, government authorities, they said that if you are going to just release them in two, three months like that, or if you don't give them a severe punishment, then there, there are going to be gang rapes everywhere. Hmm? You know, a human being is supposed to control his senses by living a life of uh, principles. Hmm? If he doesn't, then he has to be punished. Hmm? And if he is not punished, then that becomes a precedent for many others to imitate such erratic, wrong behavior, and the whole society will be full of, uh, you know, uh, miscreants doing nefarious activities, causing harm to the public. So the king has three duties, protection, administration, welfare, P-A-W, PA, I can remember. Hmm? Protection, administration, and welfare. So in protection, a yeah, king has to protect the uh, women, protect the children, protect the old people, protect the cows and protect the uh, teachers of dharma, uh, brahmanas. So these five people are called the uh, weaklings in society and they need to be cared for and protected. Hmm? And the king's duty is to see them protected. Like innocent children, they should not be kidnapped or abused. Women who are single women and who don't have a ma male member of the family to take care of them, they should not be abused or exploited. Hmm? Similarly, the Innocent creature, cows. Cow gives milk, and the milk can be turned into ghee and butter and buttermilk and so many products. Even the urine and cow dung of a cow is considered to be very antiseptic and medicinal. More than 200 diseases can be cured. And the cow is also considered one of the seven mothers supposed to be protected. So cow, and then also the teachers of dharma, like brahmanas, they don't accept salary. They only live on charity. Hmm. So all these five classes of people are supposed to be protected by the king. And administration means law and order. Huh? The king has to make sure that in the country, the thieves and rogues don't flourish. And they should be kept under control. They should be given suitable punishment or put behind the bars so that the public can uh, live peacefully. Hmm. The civil people will not be harmed by anybody. So there is administration. There should be law and order. Hmm? And uh, welfare is the food, clothing, shelter, and education, health, uh, uh, care, uh, and then spiritual care, all these things. So these are the duties of a king. Mm -hmm. And in order to execute this duty, sometimes a king may have to use violence you know, for the right purpose. Mm -hmm. So now let's come back. Now it will be easy for us to proceed ahead now. Uh, therefore, here, although it says, Nahim Siyad Sarva Bhutani, Maitrayana Gatachare, that means uh, Mahabharata says that one should not unnecessarily harm other creatures. Yes, we shouldn't harm unnecessarily, but for the right purpose, sometimes violence has to be used. So here you find Arjuna, in the picture you find, he's a Kshatriya, king. Um, he is supposed to be a king and offer protection to all the people, but he, uh, he was overcome by compassion 
uh, and uh, he, he doesn't want to fight the battle. <laughs> so, uh, Shil Prabhupada tells a story. Once upon a time, your mother uh, took a son to the doctor. Doctor said, your son has typhoid. So you should not give him anything oily. Huh? Like in India, people are very fond of puri and bhaji and pakoda. And these are all oily items. Huh? The doctor said, no oily item should be given to your boy for 21 days. She agreed. And then when she went home, she told the elder sister of the boy that this boy has got typhoid and he can't eat anything oily. Therefore, I'm not giving him anything. But then uh, one of the days, the mother was making puri, bhaji, pakoda, everything in the kitchen. It was very nice fragrance was coming. And the boy went to the kitchen repeatedly and pleading the mother, mom, please give me a little bit, little bit. Mom said, no, nothing doing. And then the later part of the day, when the mom went to the marketplace, the sister called the younger brother and said, brother, I am very sympathetic to you. Uh, mother is away, don't worry, I will give you. So she fed him with all the oily items. And the boy ate and fainted unconscious. When huh? the mother came back, she saw the situation of the child. She asked, what happened? And the elder sister cried and said, I'm sorry, you know, I, uh, I thought, you know, my brother wants all these items. I thought I can be sympathetic. Mother said, you're, you're a foolish girl. What a, what a blunder you have done. And you have shown false compassion to your brother. That was inappropriate. Then again, the mother had to take the boy and rush to the hospital again. So, uh, similarly here, Arjuna is showing false compassion. Mm. One should not show false compassion. In fact, uh, uh, when Arjuna said to Krishna that actually, let us go back to forest. Uh, we, we Pandavas will uh, continue spending time in the forest. Let, uh, let Duryodhana rule the kingdom. Krishna said, no. Now, when Duryodhana is ruling, you can see that he shamelessly brought Pandava's wife Draupadi in a public assembly and disrobe, trying to disrobe her in the public shamelessly. If he is acting like this with so much guts, you see, then all the citizens also will copy such raping activities like him. Yatha Raja Tata Praja, it is said. As the king is, the citizens will be similar to the king. So do you want the whole world to degrade in religious principles and you want the whole world to go to hell? On the contrary, if you make Yudhishthir the king, who is the eldest of the Pandavas, when he is ruling the world, uh, even if all the Kauravas die in the battle, all the women become widows also, still there is no problem. Why? Because Yudhishthir will give protection to the widows, just like a son gives protection to mother. Every widow will be protected. Nobody can touch him, any of the widows for exploiting them. So, therefore, Yudhishthir should be the king. That was Krishna's point. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, if uh, there need be a war, then there has to be a war to establish dharma. Mm -hmm. Because that will uh, help all the living entities to practice mm -hmm. the path of dharma and go back to Godhead, which is the ultimate goal of human form of life. Uh, uh, if you don't uh, protect dharma, if you allow a dharma to flourish, uh, then <clears throat> the whole world is going to be submerged in sinful activities and all will glide down to hell and they will have to repeatedly take birth and death. Mm -hmm. This was Krishna's argument. Therefore, Krishna is the father of all religious principles. He is coming uh, in, this, uh, in this battle of Kurukshetra and he is uh, organizing this war between virtue and vice, dharma and adharma mm -hmm. and establishing uh, the principles of dharma also mm -hmm, through his teachings. So, Let's proceed further now. Hmm. See, earlier we read about Sainya Niriksha. Uh, Sainya Niriksha means supervising the army. Now Arjun Vishada, which means now Arjun is now lamenting now. Earlier he was watching, now he is uh, lamenting. So he was watching with material vision, therefore he is going to lament now. But when we see with the spiritual vision that Krishna will give, then one can see the soul. Yeah. So, why he is lamenting? It's given here. Huh? Mm. Material bodily attachment mm. towards the relative. Sarvan bandhu navastitan. Mm. He, he saw that, mm. uh, oh, how will I be able to uh, defeat all these people? You know, Bhishma, Drona and all the elderly people as well as the cousins and everybody. So, he, he felt very strong bodily attachment to them. 
అండ్ మెటల్ గ్రీడ్ వెన్ ఈ సాహ దుర్యోధన స్పిరిటెడ్ ఫర్ వార్ ఈ వాజ్ సర్ప్రైజ్ అర్జున సర్ప్రైజ్ హౌ హీ సో స్పిరిటెడ్ ఫర్ వార్ షేమ్ లెస్ దీస్ ఫెలోస్ హ్ బికమ్ గ్రీడీ ఫర్ ద కింగ్డమ్ ఫర్ ద సేక్ ఆఫ్ కింగ్డమ్ దే ఆర్ కిల్లింగ్ దర్ ఓన్ బ్రదర్స్ అండ్ దే ఆర్ సో ఫూలిష్ దిస్ ఫూలిష్ పీపుల్ హ్యావ్ టు బి కరెక్టెడ్ హీ ఫెల్ట్ బట్ దెన్ హీ వాంట్స్ టు కరెక్ట్ దెమ్ బట్ హీ డజన్ వాంట్ టు కిల్ దెమ్ బట్ దే ఆర్ నాట్ రెడీ టు బి కరెక్టెడ్ దే ఆర్ నాట్ రెడీ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఐ రిమంబర్ వెన్ ఐ ఐ వాజ్ అ స్మాల్ స్కూల్ గోయింగ్ కిడ్ వన్స్ ఐ హెడ్ అ బాయిల్ ఇన్ ద హ్యాండ్ అండ్ డాక్టర్ టోల్డ్ మై ఫాదర్ అండ్ మదర్ దట్ దిస్ ఫెలోస్ బాయిల్ హెస్ బికమ్ వెరీ బిగ్ ఇట్ హెస్ బి కట్ Mm-hmm. my sister was telling the doctor that please don't cut my brother will cry you know please just put an ointment so it will become all right mm-hmm. doctor said see that stage is gone now mm-hmm. doctor said i could have put ointment if it was 3 uh, weeks before yeah. he didn't uh, come so early now the wound has become very ripe now it is filled with pus now it has to be removed with a knife uh-huh. so Uh, in the same manner demons means their sinful activities have become very ripe uh, uh, they they deserve to be uh, destroyed in the battle huh? and then because lord is involved therefore they'll get liberated moksha they will get moksha they'll get liberated uh, from all their sinful reactions because in the glands of the lord they are being destroyed huh? so in this way uh, uh, you find that arjuna is thinking oh can't they be preached to and that stage is gone duryodhana is not ready for any preaching you know vedavyasa you know dhaumya rishi markandeya rishi you know like that many many great souls narada and even vidura even bhishma they all gave lot of good advice to duryodhana and duryodhana was completely incorrigible he was in no mood to listen to anybody he was like determined to get destroyed vinasha kale viparita buddhi is a therefore the word it will come in one of the verses radhartha rashtrasya durbuddhir the word comes durbuddhi means you know kubuddhi or durbuddhi means uh, people who are always determined to do nefarious acts causing trouble to themselves and the world also around huh? he was like that duryodhana so now arjuna's reactions are shown now here huh? arjuna uvacha దృష్ట్వేమం స్వజనం కృష్ణ యుత్సం సముపస్థితం సీదంతి మమ గాత్రాణి ముఖం చ పరిశుష్యతి అర్జున స్థలం కృష్ణ దృష్ట్వే ఇమం స్వజనం కృష్ణ ఈస్ కాలింగ్ హిజ్ ఓన్ రిలేటివ్స్ స్వజనం సీయింగ్ మై ఓన్ రిలేటివ్స్ యుత్సం సముపస్థితం వెరీ స్పిరిటెడ్ టు ఫైట్ అండ్ దే ఆల్ కమింగ్ ఇన్ స్టాండింగ్ ఇన్ ద ఆర్మీ సీదంతి మమ గాత్రాణి మై Uh, all the senses of my body are trembling uh, mukham cha parishushyati my mouth is uh, becoming dry krishna is telling mm-hmm. yeah so prabhu says in the purport uh, arjuna's compassion is uh, for both the parties due to soft heartedness of a pure devotee mm-hmm. by unflinching devotion to supreme lord all the good qualities manifest mm-hmm. non devotee may be advanced by education and culture but lacks godly qualities there is one famous verse in the shrimad bhagavatam యస్తి భక్తిర్గుణస్తత్ర సమాసరావక్త కుతో మహద్గుణ మనోరతేనాతిదావతో బహిర్ దిస్ వర్ సేస్ దట్ ఇఫ్ వన్ బికమ్స్ ద డివోటీ ఆఫ్ ద సుప్రీం లాడ్ ఆల్ గుడ్ క్వాలిటీస్ విల్ కమ్ టు దట్ డివోటీ అండ్ వన్ ఇస్ నాట్ అ డివోటీ ఈవెన్ వన్ పర్సెస్ ఎస్ గుడ్ క్వాలిటీస్ దోస్ గుడ్ క్వాలిటీస్ విల్ నాట్ last long they will eventually be lost and what is the reason for this because those who are not devotees of the lord they don't have any reason to be people of very high character and there was one man i remember one politician in india he used to expose those people who do corruption one by one by one in the newspaper he would expose them and take them to task and uh, everybody would applaud and say that wow he is such an intelligent person such a detective exactly he would uh, capture people and bring them and put them on trial he is a man of high character everybody was glorifying but at one point of time he himself got a big booty yeah? in his political position he got millions and billions of dollars 
possibility. So he himself got into corruption. And then later on, he was caught. When he was caught, he was thoroughly exposed. He became ashamed. So now the point is what? Because he is not a devotee of the Lord, he was for some period of time exposing corruption, which is a wonderful thing. But then later on, he had no reason to live a life of character. But when one becomes a devotee of the Lord, one knows that Lord's eyes are watching me everywhere. Wherever I go, even if I go into your room and bolt the door, and I am sitting alone, still the Lord's eyes are watching me. Because Lord is present in every atom. The Lord creates millions of universes and enters into all the universes. And He creates millions of atoms within the universe and enters into every atom. He creates millions of species, 8.4 million species of life. And He enters, enters into the heart of every species. So tell me, where is the place where He is not present? So therefore, when a devotee becomes aware of this fact, a devotee knows that I can't do anything without the glance of the Lord upon me. So therefore, the devotee can be the person of the highest character. Character means what you are when no one is around you. People think that no one is around, but the devotee knows one person is around me. That is Lord who is watching me. So therefore, all good qualities come to a devotee. When devotee knows Krishna is the owner of everything, Sarvaloka Maheshwaram, I am simply a small part of Lord's creation. Lord has millions of children. I am one of them. And all the children are meant to align with the Supreme Father. And I will also align with them. I will cooperatively work with them and align with the Supreme Father. So this is the mood of a devotee. A devotee doesn't think I am the center of the world and everything revolves around me and everyone should be at my beck and call. And that's what foolish Duryodhana thought like that. So therefore, our paradigm uh, what type of paradigm we carry about life is very, very important. Huh? So the non-devotee cannot be a person of high character. For example, Karna, he was a very great a charitable man. Huh? He was very, one time it is said, when uh, many people used to glorify Karna for his charitable disposition. Hmm. One time even Duryodhana became little envious of Karna. Huh? How, you know, he gets so much appreciation. So one Brahman told him, uh, Duryodhan, that see, uh, during one particular season, I wanted firewood. Hmm? I came and asked you, you said all the wood is now wet and uh, we don't have any other firewood, you said. Hmm? Isn't it? You know, when uh, then uh, the Brahmana said, uh, later on I went to the place, palace of uh, Karna. And Karna also searched for firewood. Every, everywhere uh, wood was wet, I wanted a dry wood. So he couldn't get. So he demolished one beam uh, and he broke the beam and brought it down and cut it into pieces, arranged it to cut it into pieces and gave it to Brahman. Just see how charitable he is ready to demolish uh, one of the halls and remove the beam and gave me. That was so great is his charitable disposition. So yes, it is true. He was very charitable. But at the same time, he was the one who induced Duryodhana to bring Draupadi to the public assembly and humiliate her. Uh, yeah, he was the one who told Duryodhana, drive this Pandavas to forest. And they came back. He was the one who told, don't give back the kingdom. Hmm? So you will find uh, there are 14 things Lord Krishna tells about uh, Karna, what all Karna did. Hmm? So you will find Karna may have some good qualities, but not all good qualities. Because unless one is a staunch devotee of the Lord, one cannot have all the sublime qualities. Hmm? That's the, that is the point about and devotee acquiring the qualities. So now some of us may have a question in our mind, but we find that even devotees have many problems. You know, even devotees are not having all good qualities. You see, amongst the 26 good qualities, there is one good quality called as Krishna Sharanam. Hmm? They have taken shelter of Supreme Lord. That's the most glorious quality. Once that is done, then other qualities will gradually come and uh, they will gradually increase in number more and more. As devotee becomes more and more transparent, sincere, faithful, loyal to Lord and His pure devotees, then all good qualities will come. Mm. So, yeah, now Arjuna's body is trembling, Gandhi was sleeping. Vepatushya sharire me romaharshascha jayate Gandhi vamsam sate hastat tvakchai vapari dahyate So, you, uh, here Prabhupada says in the purport that uh, uh, Arjuna, 
uh, is feeling symptoms of uh, fear. Uh, body is trembling, hair is standing on end and Gandhi was sleeping, skin is burning and all that. So see the right side. Prabhupada says, Arjuna symptoms are due to fear, due to loss of relatives' lives and material conception of life. Uh, so due to that fear, all the symptoms are seen. There is another uh, thing shown on the left side. Great spiritual ecstasy when it comes. That time also body trembles like Dhruva Maharaj felt when he saw Lord Vishnu, he trembled. That's another thing. That's a spiritual ecstasy. But what Arjuna is feeling is not spiritual ecstasy. This is material fear due to the loss of relatives uh, uh, in the battle. Hmm? Hmm. He only sees uh, misfortune. Nacha shaknom yavasthatum brahmati vachame manaha nimitta nicha pashyami viparita nikeshava Prabhupada explains this uh, statement, the last two lines. Nimitta nicha pashyami viparita nikeshava He is saying that, my dear Krishna, I am only seeing the opposite result, he says. So he is seeing only misfortune. Uh, uh, he, he won't be happy even by winning. Hmm. So what, uh, what is the meaning of this nimitta nicha pashyami prita nikeshava? You aim at something, but you get something else in uh, return. Hmm? For example, Gandhi in India, you know, he was a very hardworking leader. Uh, I heard that 18 hours a day he used to travel to villages, go to hundreds of villages in India, and he started a freedom movement. He wanted to see Indians uh, uh, gain freedom from the alien yoke of the British. So, uh, and he wanted to unite the Hindus and Muslims. And he wanted the country to lead a simple life uh, and high thinking. But, surprisingly, it is seen that he, when he wanted simple living, high thinking, people should make their own handmade cloth instead of the milk cloth. And people should uh, protect cows and lead a very simple life. And people should live in villages. But then, uh, uh, <clears throat> Gandhi did not take the role of the President of India or Prime Minister of India. Rather, he gave it to another person, uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. But so what, uh, the result, what happened was, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru liked industrialization. Huh? He didn't like the Gandhi's idea of simplicity. So, instead of simplicity in lifestyle, industrialization expanded in India. People, instead of living in villages, 75% was in villages. Now people, only 45% is in villages now. That is the result people have migrated to cities. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to bring about Hindu-Muslim unity. One Hindu only shot him. Mm -hmm. One Naturam God say, shot Gandhi. Mm -hmm. He was finished. So, you will find that Gandhi had certain ambitions, but although he gave his, uh, you know, every drop of sweat and blood for the country, he was shot. Mm -hmm. You will see that. So, what, what do we learn from this episode? You will find in this world, even if you try to do good in this world, uh, you may your intentions may be good, uh, you may be working hard, but ultimately you find that you, know, you will not be able to satisfy the people. Hmm. In a family also, for example, a man is working from the age of 25 to you know, 75. Hmm. 50 years he works, and then he's turning to his wife and asking, are you satisfied with me? She says, what have you done for us? She's asking. Huh? Really? I haven't done anything. I, I uh, built this house for all of you. She says, okay, you built the house, but you could have done this, you could have done that. You, you, you didn't do any of these things. We had so much expectation from you. You were like that people and give a long list. <laughs> so in this world, to satisfy family members is difficult sometimes. It is also difficult to satisfy the people in uh, the country. Huh? They shot this fellow. They know how much work, uh, hard work he did. So, therefore, you will find in this world, materially you try to satisfy people, they will not be satisfied. Mm. Therefore, you will see that, but when you try to satisfy Lord Krishna, you chant the holy names of Krishna, study the sacred scriptures, abide by the lifestyle that he orders us to live by, mm. and you will see that uh, you go back to Godhead. Hmm? Lord has promised, Mamevye prapadyante mayam etam tarantite. He says, uh, Devan Deva Jyoyanti Madhbhakta Yanti Mamapi. My Bhakta will come back to me. Tattva Deham Punajanma Naiti Mameti Surjana. You will not take Punajanma, you will come back to me, he says. Hmm? So, therefore, here Arjuna is thinking that I am trying to do good to the Duryodhana. 
and the company why don't they understand my good intention krishna said these fellows will never understand your good intention they are hell bent on warring with you if you give up the war and go they will ridicule you laugh at you uh, you will become a laughing stock because they have no compassion for you my dear arjun krishna will say that later on huh? you know you are trying to therefore there are two things word and sword huh? word means shastra sword means shastra so the both of them come from the same uh, sanskrit dhatu shas shas means control some people can be controlled by word of the scriptures and others need sword only then they will be controlled those who are animalistic they have to be controlled by sword and those who are gentlemen they can be controlled by word hmm? so krishna said uh, that stage of teaching them good lessons and sermons is gone these fellows have become unruly and nefarious hmm? they they only need a war hmm? so your sympathy is useless krishna will tell him hmm? so because of excessive material attachments hmm, is uh, feeling false compassion due to material fear hmm. see here below uh, krishna arjuna picture you see here right every living entity his real interest is to please krishna or vishnu hmm. but uh, unfortunately living entities are interested in one's own welfare and they suffer hmm. and they get frustrations oh why am i here i am trying to do good they are not understanding so this kind of foolishness of the living entity because he doesn't know what uh, ideally if he does what krishna says he will flourish but instead of listening to krishna he has his own plan of what he wants to do therefore living entity suffers in this world hmm? so arjuna thought even if he wins how can he enjoy the kingdom without relatives hmm? that was a, another thought came this is the second argument hmm? first one is compassion second argument is enjoyment ஆர்டர் then he goes to heaven isn't it i mean if he fights the battle he goes to heaven if he follows krishna's order he goes to spiritual world mm-hmm. but he is attracted to bodily relationships hoping to be happy uh, and therefore he is having his own logic by killing relatives i, I can't be happy in life so he is not willing to fight so what is arjuna arguing here he says that you see if i win the battle but all my relatives will die then how can i show off to them uh, because in this world people want to go abroad and make a lot of money come back and go to the marriage part marriages and parties and show to the relatives to see how much money i have made you know how successful i am see me see my beauty that's what everybody wants to show off huh? but arjuna was thinking in the battle if everybody dies i will be king of the world but nobody will be there to applaud me huh? nobody will be there to uh, that means he is thinking from his own point, enjoyment point of view he is not thinking what krishna wants he is thinking that what will i get out of this hmm. see this is a problem hmm. the, his main suffering is coming because of he has his own independent idea of enjoyment he is not thinking of large enjoyment hmm. it is exactly like if a hand takes a palm of food hmm. and the hand thinks i am very weak i want this food to become nourished and the hand is doing like this hmm. then, then the hand cannot get nourishment it has to put in the belly when you put in the belly then the hand gets nourishment similarly when you do what krishna says to do then you become happy but instead of asking krishna uh, what do you want me to do my lord you are just saying if i win the battle i will be king of the world how can i show off uh, you know there will be no one to appreciate me like that arjuna is thinking hmm. yeah that's the second one is enjoyment goal uh, so here we have shown this is a spiritual world uh, so you will see that everyone is serving the lord yeah. god is the supreme person and we are all his eternal servants huh? by loving him and serving him we can be happy everybody can be happy huh? so all living beings are pure and auspicious non envious in the spiritual world huh? everybody is completely surrendered to lord huh? mm. uh, for example you will always find uh, the children going to school they follow the principal and the principal gives them education training and degree and everything 
Here people are working in a company. They follow, they serve the plans of the CEO. And they also get salary, perks, facilities and everything. Mm -hmm. Similarly, as citizens of a country, they serve the Prime Minister. This is the Indian Prime Minister, Narendra Modi. They align with the laws made by the Prime Minister. Then in turn, they get social facilities, welfare and everything. This is a easy to understand concept. Plural subordinates serve a singular supreme person. And then they get uh, in turn the nourishment, uh, their needs, everything. In the same manner, if you take all living and spirit souls, they should serve the Supreme Lord. When they serve the Supreme Lord, then they can get nourishment and happiness in return. They can receive eternal happiness because Supreme Lord is eternal. Then the living entities are eternal. Then the relationship is eternal. Then you get eternal benefit by serving Him. It is as simple as that. Yeah. But Arjuna is not ready to fight even in exchange of three worlds. He's telling, No, my Lord, I don't want to fight at all. He has made up his mind. Kim no Rajena Govinda Kim Bhoga Jivite Nava Yesha Marte Kankitam no Rajam Boga Sukhanicha Taime Avastita Yudhe Pranam Tekpadhananicha Acharya Pitara Putra State Bachapita Maha Matula Shwasura Pautraha Shala Sambandina Statha Yetan Hantumichami Gnatopi Madhusudana Avitra Lukara Jesya Heto kim no mahi krite, Nihatya dartarashtrana, Kapri tisya janardana. He's asking, Yeta nahantu michami. I do not want to kill all these people, Arjuna. Hmm? Arjuna is saying, Krishna is saying, Abhi thailokya rajasya. Hmm? Even if I become master of all the upper, middle, and lower worlds, hmm? uh, you know, I don't want to still. Uh, uh, enjoy the unravel the kingdom. Kim no Raja and Govind, Kim Bhogar Jivitanava. Even if I get all these things, uh, whom will I show to? My relatives will be all dead and gone, he's saying. And the third one is now Arjuna, Arjuna is fearful of sinful reactions. Papa Meva Shraye Dasman Hatvaitan Atatayinaha Dasman Narhavayam Hantum Dhartarashtran Sabandhavan Vajana. He's saying, Papam, uh, if I kill these people, Pap will come on me, which means sinful reactions will overcome. And it will be, I'll, I'll become afflicted by sinful reactions, like that he's feeling. See here, uh, in the Vasishta Smriti, there are six people uh, called as Atatai or aggressors. Huh? The arsonist, that means one who is uh, giving poison, one who is setting fire to the house, one who attacks with deadly weapons, one who plunders riches, one who occupies another's land, one who kidnaps another's wife. They are, these are all people who are punishable by violence. They can be killed as punishment. There's no sinful reaction if you kill them. These are called six kinds of aggressors. If you see, Kaur was headed by Duryodhana. They did all the six. Uh, Duryodhana fed poison to Bhima when he was a small boy and Bhima was saved by the biting of the snakes in the water, uh, river water. Then later on, uh, Duryodhana sent the Pandavas to Varanavat Lakshagra through his father, in a house made of lac palace. There he tried to set a fire, and Pandavas fortunately were saved by Vidura's uh, guidance. And then, in this way, in the army is ready to attack them with deadly weapons and kill them. Uh, yeah, and he plundered the riches by taking away all the kingdom of the world. He also wanted to usurp their wife, Draupadi. He wanted to occupy the land. Everything they have done, so they deserve to be killed. Yeah. So this is Artha is explained. So in the top, you see one line I have written. Artha Shastra, Dharma Shastra, Parodharma Shastra I have written. I'll explain to you what it is. Artha means money. Dharma means moral principles. And Parodharma means supreme religious principles. So... Duryodhana is going by Artha Shastra, which means Duryodhana is thinking only of money, 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 money is honey. Hmm? Whereas Arjuna is saying from Dharma Shastra point of view, these guys are hell bent on usurping our land and money and gold and everything. For that sake, why should we kill our relatives? Because after all, they are our blood relatives. Like that, Arjuna is feeling that is Dharma Shastra. But Paro Dharma Shastra means for the sake of establishing Dharma, you know, one should give up a petty. Uh, family considerations. That is Krishna's point. Hmm. Say, for example, in a country, uh, uh, your boy joins the army or navy or air force. 
and then he is taking training for 10 years. Now the war is coming, his mother is crying. She is saying, my dear son, don't go for the battle. You will die in the battle, my son. Just stay at home. I will cook and feed you nicely. You say no to the war. So what should a boy do? When a higher responsibility is calling him, he will have to give up his attachment to mother and father and family and friends and go for the battle, although they may cry. In the same manner, when the Lord is telling Arjuna that to establish dharma, you should fight the battle, Arjuna should not hesitate. He should do it, but he is having his own uh, favoritism you know, and considerations of, you know, uh, he is saying it will, uh, you know, uh, he is saying from Dharma Shastra point of view, but Krishna is saying Paro Dharma. Dharma Shastra is like a candle. Paro Dharma is like a sun. What is the value of a candle in front of the sun? And Artha Shastra is like a dark room. Money minded people will do any damn thing. So, in a dark room, you lit up a candle. But the candle in front of the sun is insignificant. Huh? I give you examples here. See, the, these are three brothers. Huh? And the extreme right, you find ten-headed Ravana. He was a big demon. Huh? And his one brother is Vibhishan in the middle. And the extreme left, you find Kumbhakarana. Let us see what these fellows did. Huh? Huh? See, this Ravana uh, took away Mother Sita, you know, wife of, wife of Lord Rama. So, and he used to do this with many women in the universe. Go here, go there and pick up any woman who is beautiful for his own enjoyment. At last, when he took uh, the goddess of fortune, the wife of Rama, then he was destroyed. So, he is immoral. Huh? To steal another man's wife or not, that is Ravana's question. But Ravana did a moral blunder. Huh? And uh, this is Kumbhakarana, his brother. When his brother Kumbhakarana saw that Ravana is in trouble now, Rama is coming. So, he told his brother, Brother, why did you bring uh, the mother of the universe, Sita, here? It's like tying fire in your belly. It's very dangerous. But Kumbhakarna was very powerful. Huh? In a year, he used to sleep for six months. Huh? And um, when he was woken up by Ravana, Kumbhakarna had a uh, you know, blood relationship consideration with Ravana. He said, okay, brother, for your sake, I will fight. I know you are doing wrong, but after all, you are my brother. What to do? So, I will fight for your sake. But, if I die in the battle, uh, then you should give back Sita to Rama. Like that he said. And then, of course, Kumbhakarna was killed in the battle by Rama. But then, Ravana did not give back Sita. Uh, so, for him, for Kumbhakarna, the duty to brother was greater than duty to God. He did an ethical blunder. He did. Because he was, actually, what, what is the question of brother, sister, mother, father and all, because in one life you are in one family, next life you will be in another family. In one life you are in one country, next life you will be in another country, isn't it? Uh, so, but he didn't uh, think uh, from soul point of view, he saw from body point of view. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, you can see the third brother, Vivishan. He is a Rama, Lord Rama's devotee, he is the devotee of the Supreme Lord. Uh, so, Vivishan, in the assembly of uh, ministers of Ravana, he openly told the fact, Brother, you cannot keep Sita. You give her back. Otherwise, you will be destroyed. He spoke the transparent truth. You know, but uh, Ravana became so angry, he kicked his brother. You see in the picture, with his feet, he is kicking on his chest. Uh, he said, all my ministers are nodding the head. They are all my yes-men. Why are you not yes-men? Uh, why are you opposing? Get lost. So, he kicked him away. Then you will find Vibhishan flew uh, to Rama's side and said, my dear Lord, my brother is not listening. I gave him good advice. Now he is going to be destroyed. I don't want to be with a sinful person. Hmm? Like that he said, and then he decided to leave his brother because uh, he understood that uh, no point uh, following a sinful, uh, sinful brother. So he decided to give up that bad company of his brother. Hmm? So uh, in this way, he went and joined the side of uh, Rama. You will see that. See here, he went and took shelter of Ram. That means duty to God and citizens is more important than duty to sinful brother. So these are three people I told you now. So out of these three, you will find, uh, you know, uh, Kumbhakarna went by bodily attachment to his brother, whereas Vibhishan transcended that attachment and became a devotee of the Lord. He knew that Ravana is a brother in this life, but he is walking a wrong path. I will not side with him. I will join the Supreme Lord. So he is a pure devotee, pure devotee. Mm -hmm.
So, therefore, Kshatriya can be saintly but not cowardly. Hmm? Lord Rama never showed any cowardice. Hmm? The same manner, Arjuna should stand to the duty now and kill the aggressors without any hesitation. Sukhina hmm? so, Sama Madhava is saying, Madhava, you are the husband of Goddess of Fortune. Then why do you, oh, Goddess of Fortune is very merciful. So why don't you be merciful like that? He's arguing from an illusory point of view. Hmm? So he's fearing about the sinful reaction. There cannot be any sinful reactions because the Supreme Lord Krishna says that if anyone surrenders to my order, Aham tvam sarva moksha ishami, I will free you from all the sinful reactions, even if there are. But there is no sinful reaction because these are all aggressors, six type of aggressors. Now somebody may ask, you know, why the other party is not considering all these factors? The reason is Logo Pahata Chetasaha. Second line is saying, they are all driven by greed. That's a problem. Look at this picture. Duryodhana and Shakuni, they are all driven by greed. They don't care about religious principles. Huh? Therefore, Lord wanted to tell, impress upon Arjuna that actually the other party is a greedy party. They will not consider all these religious factors. Hmm. Uh, due to greed, they are ready to fight and kill each other. Hmm. So Arjuna is thinking about the destruction of the family hmm, and the sinful activity is worried. Huh? So he is worried about it. Huh? And then now the fourth reason is giving destruction of family traditions. Huh? He is talking about that. Kulakshaye pranashanti kula dharma sanatana dharma nashte kulam kritsna madharma bhi bhavatyuta. With the destruction of the dynasty, the eternal family tradition is vanquished, and thus the rest of the family becomes involved in religion. Like you see in the picture, uh, what has happened uh, in some families? When the male members who are religious people like grandfather and all they pass away, the next generation people or the, the women are at home, you know, they don't know what are the religious principles. They just spend the life of eat, drink and be merry like you see in the picture here. Huh? And the family has no religious values. You will see in some families like that. You see in sometimes in a family, in the puja room of uh, the family, Yes, uh, some grandfather, maybe a very religious person. He rises early in the morning and cleanses the puja room, puts flowers, offers fruits to the Lord, lifts up the lamp and sits and chants the holy name, studies the sacred word of God, everything they do. And then they keep the ambience at home huh? and chanting many, many mantras. So the whole home is like a temple. And uh, like my, uh, I, I've seen my grandfather, huh? Like that he would do, he would do hours and hours of puja. So then the children also come and they also sit and they bow down and they also learn good things. And then the, the whole family follows the path of morality, ethics and spirituality and everything. They fear God. They are God-fearing, pure and simple. They lead a life of simple living, high thing. Good families. But when those elderly family members pass away, then the next generation sometimes brings a big television at home. And they start watching all kinds of cinema movies and serials and singing cinema songs. And they eat out in a hotel. They put up parties. And men also become degraded in their character. Apart from their wife, they want to keep in touch with other women, other college girls and everybody. They become polluted in uh, mixing with other women. And then in this way, uh, due to the characterless lifestyle, they are just eat, drink and be merry culture. Huh? The whole family becomes polluted and degraded like that in the absence of good souls. Now Arjuna's worry was, in the battle, if I kill all the men, their wives will become widows. If they become widows, they will not have any man to guide them in the path of religious principles. Then if no one is there to guide, then those women will become polluted and also women will be weak. Other men will exploit their bodies and the children produced will be called Varana Sankara. Varana Sankara means... Uh, unwanted progeny. They are not born of proper husband and wife. They are born either by prostitution or uh, when a woman is raped by some man and the child is born. And these are the children you find sometimes in Bombay and other places in cities. They are uh, roaming in the streets, uh, no mother, father to take care of them. They become hoodlums 
thieves and rogues and they start looting other people shooting and all that they do huh? so arjuna was worried about the family degradation like that so it's time up now i have another class also to go so this is the death of the elderly family tradition stop huh? and then in this way you know what happened the elder members of the family pass away there is no purification activities after that uh, then the members become religious and how can people get liberated so he is talking about uh, uh, the temporary dharmas like you have shown two dharmas paro dharma and apara dharma paro dharma means the soul's duty to god the love of god of the soul huh? that is paro dharma apara dharma means many dharmas as you see the picture of the tree here varna dharma ashram dharma kula dharma jati dharma nimitta dharma guna dharma arjuna is talking about these dharmas krishna says arjuna forget about this uh, apara dharma temporary bodily dharmas he follows the ultimate dharma paro dharma krishna told him later on so these are the sanskaras arjuna was worried that these sanskaras may not happen purificatory ceremonies at home beginning uh, with uh, garbhadan sanskar even before a child is born it is then mm, from there uh, see the top left corner garbhadanam before conception then pumsavanam simantam jatakarman there are 40 sanskaras actually out of which 16 are major hmm. arjuna thought that religious people are not there how these things can happen that was his worry hmm. yeah and then women will become polluted hmm. and then the children born progeny born will be improper and all that he was worrying like this he was uh, thinking about degradation so four reasons i finished in this class So the reason will come in the second chapter now. We have almost finished the first chapter now, and yeah, and this kind of children <laughs> with no proper purification ceremony, they will become atrocious, and the world will suffer. That is his point. Uh, so he was telling, but he, uh, Krishna will tell him, "Don't worry, Arjuna. Um, Yudhishthir Maharaj will ensure all religious uh, principles will be done. He will teach that." Mm. Yeah. So the next class, I am going to answer a very important question. why krishna being god did not stop the kurukshetra war mm-hmm. ultimately god can do mm-hmm. what he cannot do so so many crores of people are killed in the battle people ask the question so i will answer the question in the next class okay yeah so uh, it, uh, it was a bit uh, extensive uh, topic today I, four reasons we we completed today mm-hmm. if you have any questions so you all can write i have answered uh, many of your questions by individual emails to you huh? those who had asked question five six emails i have sent i remember similarly if you have further questions you can either write back in the same mail or if you put the questions to swapnil and jay krishna they will uh, send it to me and then i will uh, respond back to all of you okay thank you shila prabhu pat ki jai thank you so thank you. Uh, Adi Ogun, uh, you are super enthusiastic. You were there for the one full day uh, retreat yesterday, and now today you are here again, up again for the morning program today. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you for having me, Prabhuji. Thank you, thank you, Arikshna.